would like to make a short statement mainly regarding what uh, transpired yesterday and then uh, we'll get uh, a few questions before we head out. Um, as I'm sure you all know, this is the last day of campaigning in the presidential election uh, of uh, this year, 2016. And we've invited you to address uh, four key stakeholders on a number of issues that have arisen throughout uh, the campaign and to put the incident of yesterday, Monday, the 15th of February, into its proper context. So first, to the people of Uganda, I wish uh, to state that in this campaign we have traversed the entire country. I and my team have visited each and every district of Uganda over the last three months. And we received a tremendous welcome. We had very engaging conversations uh, with all of uh, our citizens in these uh, districts. And uh, our people spoke with one voice and gave a simple message that they want change. That was a very, very uh, strong and direct message everywhere that we went. And I'd like to say that they do not only need change, but they deserve change. Uh, because the 30 years of the NRM uh, regime have uh, caused a lot of disappointment and disaffection uh, across uh, the entire uh, population. And the voice from the people is that they have been failed in the last 30 years and what could not be done in that long period cannot be done in another five years. And so, right from one border to the other, we received massive crowds of people, very enthusiastic, and all of them clearly saying that uh, we must have change and take our country in a new direction. Um, and this came from the whole spectrum of our citizens, the elderly, the youth, the disabled, the women, the men, uh, the voice was really one. Of course, the youth, uh, most enthusiastic and energetic, of course, their stakes are higher than for the rest of the country, and they have had such a very raw deal with uh, uh, more than 80% of them unable to access any form of employment. <clears throat> and uh, it is this overwhelming enthusiasm on the part of the population that has caused the panic in the no change camp. And that is why yesterday elements of the Uganda police and other security agencies unleashed violence on our supporters and sabotaged our campaign in Kampala Central by arresting me and uh, uh, detaining uh, some of our other leaders on, pretty, on some petty pretexts. And it is a shame that indeed one young man whose full identity has not yet been uh, received was shot and killed in this unnecessary violence. 
and we shall mourn his loss and declare him a hero of the struggle for the liberation of our country. Now, to those who think that the enthusiasm of the people of Uganda can change or be dampened by unleashing uh, the type of violence that we saw, I'd like to say that it's too late. Your time is really up. The people of Uganda have made up their minds. And as they have shown you, and the rest of the world, they want change. Nothing and no one is going to stand in their way to get the change they need and deserve. There are just two days more. And in two days time, this nightmare is going to be over. And so on the 18th of February, I'd like to invite all our citizens to, as defiantly as they have attended all our meetings, turn up in your millions and cast your votes. Come and vote for change. There is nothing that you should be afraid of. This is our country. And we have to stand by our country. We should vote early. We should not wait till the afternoon. Let all our people vote by midday. And let us stay at the polling stations and guard our votes. Mobilize everybody around you to go and vote. And our coordinators who are going to be at, who are at all parishes will be guiding what we need to do after the counting of our votes which is going to take place at 4 p.m. There is absolutely no doubt that we are winning this election. And I would like to assure all Ugandans that we are committed to ushering into our country a true democracy and constitutionalism, to respect the rule of law in this country, we are completely committed to ensuring peace, stability, and territorial integrity of our country. And we are committed to the creation of a broad-based uh, national government, uh, a government of national unity, in which all capable and patriotic Ugandans will be called upon to work for the rebuilding of our nation, regardless of ethnicity, religious belief, social class, or political hue. In two days' time, once again, I'd like to assure you, Ugandans, that we shall have something new in our country, something you should be proud of. And the promised walk of a swagger will, really, will truly begin in just two days' time. I'd like to turn to the Electoral Commission, which is the second stakeholder to address. And I know that you do not like to hear this, but we must constantly remind you, because it is true, and because the people of Uganda and the world need to hear and understand it. The laws of Uganda make you servants of our people and not our masters as you masquerade to be. The Electoral Commission is a creature of law and it must abide strictly by law. It is mandated to organize free, fair, transparent and credible elections. 
and to be truly independent. Unfortunately, the Electoral Commission and uh, Mr. Badri Kigundu has repeatedly fallen short of its legal mandate. Many demands have been made of the EC, the Electoral Commission, to in the run-up to this election to take steps that would guarantee that the election is free and fair. But the Electoral Commission has repeatedly refused to take even the most basic uh, steps. This is why we have termed our campaign a defiance campaign, because we have campaigned and we are going to win the election despite the playing field being so uneven and despite the heavy institutional and personal bias against us uh, and not because the EC has organized a free and fair election. In other words, the election we are going to win is in spite of its being not free or fair, which we knew right from the word go. Today, with two days to go to the election, we make the following demands of the Electoral Commission. One, to seize and desist from overt partisanship. Professor Kigundu and the Electoral Commission spokespersons repeatedly make utterances that denigrate opposition candidates and show a partiality towards the incumbent. As recently as last night, uh, Professor Kigundu said in an on-record television interview that if he had his own way, I would not have been nominated. This is <coughs> outrageous and is not becoming of the chairman of the institution that is entrusted with the management of an election for and on behalf of the people of Uganda. Professor Kigundu, this overtly partisan behavior must stop and you should come out and assure the country and the world of your commitment to holding a free, fair and transparent election.